Welcome back to the second example video from chapter 10. So we have another kinematics problem uh, so that we can kind of compare the two examples from this section directly and see the similarities in the structure and the differences in what tools we use and why we, those differences exist. So we have a wheel that's turning at 8 radians per second. So here's our wheel. We'll have it rotating. doesn't really matter what direction it's rotating. And that initial thing that we learn about the wheel is the 8 radians per second. So that's the initial angular velocity. We're then told that it speeds up. So speeding up means that the omega, uh, sorry, the alpha is going to be pointing in the same direction. So when we calculate it, we'll, we will expect it to be positive. And we're told that the final state of the problem is that the final omega is equal to 25 radians per second and that the final um, location or final angle um, is three revolutions. Now we know that for um, theta the standard unit needs to be radians so right away we can turn that into radians so there are two pi radians in one revolution. And so our theta value here is 6 pi, but just so that you can write out 6 pi without, um, without a problem, but just so we have it here, it's 18.8 .8 radians. Okay, so the key thing here is that to start the problem, we draw a picture, we list the given information. That's been true for all of the kinematics problems that we do. And if this is our final position in angle, then we do need to note to ourselves that the initial position is zero. Um, in the same way that when we had a lot of distance, find the distance problems, we had our initial x value be zero, and we just cared about the final x value. Same idea in this case. So in part A, we are asked to find the angular acceleration, so we're finding alpha. And we know from chapter um, 2 that when we're solving for the acceleration, rephrasing the question's a little bit more difficult. We have to figure out if there, uh, what two things we know at the same time at the end of the problem. But they're here in red for us. We know the final angular velocity when we have the final angular position. So we have if omega is 25 radians per second when theta is 18.8 .8 radians. By filling in those blanks with omega and theta, we are going to use the omega theta equation. And so that's omega squared equals omega naught squared plus 2 alpha theta minus theta naught. All right, so our final angular velocity is 25. So 25 squared. Our initial angular velocity is 8. So 8 squared plus 2 times our unknown alpha times 18.8 .8 minus 0. Okay. So we can simplify this a little bit, and I'm going to change to blue so that we can see what's going on. So we have 625 equals 64. And then the 18.8 .8 is really 18.85 times 2 is 37.7. 37.7 alpha. So to solve for alpha, we have to subtract 64 from both sides. So 625 minus 64 gets us 561. So let me raise this up a bit. 561 equals 37.7 alpha. So we can divide both sides by 37.7. And we will get that alpha is equal to 14.88 or 14.9 radians per second squared. All right, so I know it's in the corner here, but the alpha is 14.9 radians per second squared. 
And that's just part A of the problem, okay? I'm gonna have to erase some of this, so if you need to, you can certainly pause the video at this point to make sure you've um, caught up writing things down if you need it. But to show us the flow of the problem one more time, we draw a picture. This, in this case, the picture is mostly just a circle and some arrows, arrows that are either moving in the same rotational sense or moving in opposite rotational senses like the previous example. We wrote down the given information and put it into standard units. Then we figured out what we were looking for, and that involved rephrasing the question. And by rephrasing the question, that helps us figure out what tool to pick up. So step one, picture. Step two, given information. Step three, rephrase the question. Step four, pick the equation that is relevant. Step five, plugging in all of these numbers. And then step six, checking to see if this makes sense. We know that it has to be positive because we're speeding up. We don't really have otherwise strong um, intuition for these angular acceleration numbers, what are big numbers and small numbers. So all we can really do with that common sense check is make sure that the number came out to be positive the way we expected. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this. Um, I'll leave the answer here, but to get part B onto the board while still having all of our given information handy, I'm gonna erase this. So for part B, we are asked to find the time when we reach that final angular speed. So we are finding T when the omega final is 25 meters uh, radians per second. So by filling it in with those particular letters, T and omega, we are using the omega t equation. Rephrasing the question allows us to figure out exactly what tool that we should be picking up. So the omega t equation is omega final equals omega initial plus alpha t. So we have 25 equals 8 plus 14.9 t. We can subtract 8 from both sides. So we have um, 17 equals 14.9 t. So we'll divide both sides by 14.9. And t is going to equal 1.14 seconds. So again, kind of in the corner. But here we go. So Again, the process is the same. We rephrased the question so that we could figure out what equation to use and plug in numbers and solve. This is what we tried to do all throughout chapters two and three. In the angular kinematics problems, um, we have that same process. The skill drill goes through several other examples, especially with rolling objects where we connect the ideas of chapter two with chapter 10. Um, and then we'll see examples to try ourselves in the problem set. So uh, this one is finished. I will see you in the next video.